Struggles that break our hearts in two sometimes blind us to the truth. But our Father knows what's best for us and His ways are not our own. Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love Online. And God wants you to taste and see that the Lord is good. I don't care what you think about it. I don't care what you, how you've sized them up or sized them down. The bottom line is, He is good. All right, let's move to Psalms chapter 34. Starting at verse 6. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. How many of your friends can you depend on like that? How many of all your little devices and all your little schemes can get you out of all your troubles? How many relatives can get you out of all your troubles? Hmm. Think about that. How many of your friends, your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your lovers, your husband's wife, believe it or not, there are times when your immediate family members, your parents, your spouses cannot get you out of the pickle life has put you in. But God, but God, just want to put that in your head. Verse seven, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. So what God does, he, you know, we have angels around us. We have assigned angels and they are there for a whole lot of reasons. And I'm telling you, there are benefits to walking with the Lord. No matter what some of you may think, some of you may not even want to believe there is a God. That's fine and dandy. But I'm going to tell you, God has proven himself to me. And I'm sure many of our online Church of, of Love members will be able to attest to all the times God has proven himself to them. So you can go right on ahead and fly solo all you want. But I'm going to tell you, life is so much harder. Trials are so much heavier. Hurts are so much more painful. So much more irreversible damage is done when you don't have God in your life, when you're not depending on him, leaning on him, communing with him, obeying him. All right, here we go. Verse eight. Oh, taste and see. This is the, this is the bottom line right here. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Now, this is coming to my mind right now. When was the last time somebody took you to a restaurant? Oh, I'm on this. Believe me, I'm not, I'm not having a senior moment. When was the last time somebody took you to a restaurant? And it was maybe a Thai restaurant or an East Indian or an Ethiopian restaurant or an Italian or Mexican or whatever that you've never had before. An Irish restaurant, whatever. And here you go in for the first time. You don't know if you're going to like the food. Now, some of you, this is the comical part about some of our human species. Some of you will actually say, I've never had it and I don't want it. And you don't even know what it tastes like. You don't even know what you're missing, but you won't try it. Why? It's new. It doesn't have to stay new. But you're not adventurous, so you're not going to try something you haven't had before. Interesting, huh? Look at all that you might be missing out on because of that closed mind. All right, so here you are at a restaurant, and someone says, I want you to try this meal. This is so good. And you don't want to try the meal, even though they're going to pay for it. You don't want to try it because it doesn't, Sound like anything you've had before. Maybe you've never had lamb. Maybe you've never had uh, the kind of potatoes that they fix in the Irish restaurant. Maybe you've never had the mugu gai pan that they cook in, at Chinese restaurants. There may be things you've never had before, so you're afraid to try it. But you know what? 
what's surprising is there a time, I remember the first time when I was in LA with my husband, we were at a restaurant where they had fried frogs. We ate frog legs, y'all. I had never had a frog leg before. But Milton was adventurous and so was I. So we tried it and we liked it. Surprise, surprise. See, that's why you need to try. You have to put the Lord on and see if he fits. You got to at least give him a try. You got to at least give him that time to draw close to him. A one day visit, a popcorn visit isn't going to get it, baby. You got to spend quality time to really get to know him. Because other than that, you'll spend your life fixing everything yourself. You'll spend your life depending on your own pea brain. You'll spend your life depending on your own schemes and devices to solve all the problems that come in life. And you will never get the best because God is the best. And he will deliver you out of all your struggles out of all your troubles, out of all your hurts, out of all the stings of the bitter memories of the past, out of all your poor choices, he will deliver. But like the restaurant, some of you will not try it. He just, well, just taste, just here's a clean fork, taste this. No, 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 I don't want to try it. I don't like the way it looks. Just because it looks bad doesn't mean it is bad. Just because it doesn't have the colors and the and the trappings and the pretty stuff on the plate doesn't mean that it's going to taste nasty. Have you ever tried glass noodles? Have you ever tried uh, eating mushrooms mixed with green onions? I'm not even going to go into all that. The bottom line is there are flavors and, and spices and things that you can put on your plate to really spice up your meal. I mean, just give it a blast, but you won't try it because you never tried it before. And you're afraid if you get that taste in your mouth, you're not going to be able to get rid of it. How many meals have you had in a lifetime, baby? They don't leave bitter taste in your mouth, but guess what? Your past does because those choices you made without God, because you were depending on you, have left you wounded, have left you limping, have hindered you, have blocked you, have sabotaged your progress for decades. Why? Because you had to do it your way. So that leaves a bitter taste. Food won't leave a bitter taste before a few minutes, but that leaves a bitter taste. Or maybe a few hours if you have a few bubbles bubbling up after the meal. So you have to remember that a lot of things you have not experienced, a lot of things you refuse to believe is because you have not yet tasted. You have not yet seen that the Lord is good. If you only knew what you were missing out on. But those of us in God's church of love, those of us in the body of Christ, in other churches, in other denominations, those of us who have tasted how good the Lord really is. We're convinced. And we will not go back like a dog going back to his vomit. We will not go back to the mess we left behind because we don't want any part of it. See, once you see the best, oh, let me share this real quick. I'm trying to paint a picture. I'm trying to paint analogies in your head so you get it because to describe God is kind of impossible. So I have to use human terms and human pict pictorial ideas and images so that you will kind of get a feel of where I'm going with this. Years ago, I want, I was talking to my niece Peggy about it. I wanted to see what real, real good diamonds look like. And I told her, I said, what I was going to do is go to the jewelry store or, or a couple of them and ask them to show me the most expensive diamonds they had. The most expensive, the ones with the clarity, with the brilliance beyond measure. 
And when they brought out the tray and they held out certain diamonds or certain rings or whatever, and I looked at it, I wanted to look at something that was a cat, at least a carrot, so I could really see the details. And when they brought it out and I took my loop and I looked at it and turned it all kind of ways, it was amazing the difference between that and a regular ordinary run of the mill diamond that the average Joe could possibly afford, like me. So I wanted, if I had to get a cheap diamond, I wanted it to at least resemble as closely as possible what a real good diamond would look like. And I could never know if I had a good quality diamond at my price point unless I looked at the best. So I had to compare it to the best. Think of this now. Think of this. I'm talking about God, not diamonds. I'm just trying to get you to picture what I'm, the, where I'm going with this. Why some of you won't even try God. He's the best. You can't get any better than him. Nowhere. No idol. No statue. No lover. No other is any better. There's nothing better, higher than God. Nothing. No quality that's purer than God. So here I am looking at this diamond. This diamond in this store was $53,000. I'll never forget the price. <laughs> and I looked at it and I was amazed at the, the, the way the light danced and dazzled and yeah, I love diamonds. I love reflective things. So I'm a sparkle and shine kind of girl. So I'm looking and then I said, okay, now show me some of your cheaper ones. You know, let's go back down to the hundreds. <laughs> and I'm looking at the little quarter, you know, the, uh, the, 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 uh, a point two five carat, you know, pitiful, but that's where I was. Okay. So I'm looking, looking at the expensive one. I'm looking at the cheap ones. They're pulling out all the cheap ones and I'm looking, looking. I got the one that was the most comparable for its price point. Because if you really want to know how beautiful your life can be, baby, you got to hold it in your hand. You got to look at it. You've got to explore it. I needed a loop to really look into the details of that diamond. You need the Bible to look at the details of God. You need to be with the people of God to know all that he's able to do because everybody's not going to experience all the same things. Someone may experience something that this one never experienced. And while this one never experienced that, that one never experienced what this one has experienced. So we network and, ex and exchange experiences. That's called testimony. You don't hear the testimonies of God if you're not around the people of God. See, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. If you want your faith to grow, you've got to go deep into God's word. You've got to read line by line. You've got to really get in there and dissect, analyze, and and, and and explore all the facets to God's heart, all the facets to God's character, all the facets to God's personality, to who God is in our lives, all the facets to his love. Why? God is love. You can't have one without the other. God is love. So for many of you, you get frustrated with your life. And the first thing you want to lay aside is God. Because you're looking at it through your own eyes. You haven't picked up the loop and picked up the word and gotten deep into it. Because you don't have the patience. But if you could sit your little happy hips down. I'm not fussing. I'm making a point. If you can sit your little happy hips down, pick up that Bible, dust it off, pick up your loop or your glasses, whatever you want to call it. 
but your spiritual eye. And you read that word from your heart, not from your mind. And you start to really get into the details of who God is. Start with Genesis. Start with Genesis chapter 1. One of the, of, of the greatest things that happened in my life in the natural, from the supernatural, was when I found out they were going to sell the salon that I was that I had. I had a salon. I had my own salon on Lake Avenue. And the owners let us know that we needed to clear out because they were selling it. And they didn't want to sell it as a salon. They wanted the whole place emptied out. So I walk around the corner and I look at another place. I'm not going to drag on this. I'm just making a point. I look at another place, and after I go through so many people, I run into a woman who's about to close her shop, and we talk, and we hit it off, and decide, let's think about you keeping your boutique open, and me moving my salon into your boutique. How's that? Now, what God showed me as I walked back around the corner, back to my salon that was already open, was in the beginning... Check this out. No, I got to say it like this. The earth was without form and void. That's the way the Lord quoted it in my mind. The earth was without form and void. And God said, and it was as if God was saying, I mean, he was literally saying this in my heart. As you were walking, I was creating. As you were looking, I was creating. As you were talking, I was creating. I made a way where there was no way. There were no openings. There were no vacancies. But I created a setting for you and the other lady to be able to sustain each other without either one of you having to close your business for good. I made that happen. Now, if I had never walked up the block and walked around the corner and asked questions, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. If I had never made that step to even explore the possibilities, that door would never have opened to me. Some of you, the things you don't have in life is because you will not open those flaps and ask. Because your pride stands in the way of you and the thing you want. You don't want people to think you need help. You don't want people to think less of you. You're worried about people's opinions, so you don't ask. You don't reach. You don't seek. You don't scratch. You don't dig. You don't dissect. You don't look through the loop. You don't have time to look through the loop because you got to figure this thing out. You got to make something happen now. God may say, no, rest in me. Wait on the Lord. There's a song that says, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. When you've learned your lessons well, in his timing, he will tell us what to do, where to go what to say but most of you won't wait you got to do it now 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 then you get mad at god when it blows up in your face how could god allow that to happen to me how could god allow that to fall through how could god allow my money to be lost why you're so hasty you're in such a hurry you don't have the patience you got to handle it now you got to put out this fire you got to put out that fire you got to do this do that do that say this say this you got to do this scheme do this scheme you got to work it out baby because god is just too slow by the time God moves, the whole thing will fall through. That's a lie from the pit. God will carry you in that thing and not allow anybody to come against you or put you out if you're waiting on him. And if he allows the person to put you out, guess what? There'll be a place that he has designated waiting for you because God delivers us out of all our troubles, not some out of all so you can play hopscotch and 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 play 
uh, a, a gamble with this chance and that chance and and chance this effort and chance that effort and and and, and take a risk here and take a risk there all you want or you can trust in the one God that is true, that is dependable, that is trustworthy, and constantly proves himself. I'm going to read verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. That goes in so many different directions, just like the facets of a diamond. Want is lack. Want is the longing for something you don't have. Want is need. So yeah, needs arise, but needs don't stay because God fulfills. God meets those needs. God will provide all your needs according to his riches in glory. And God will do it in ways you never thought of. You're looking at the conventional ways for God to provide, provide, provide. I got to line this up. That has to happen by this day. That has to happen over here. And that has to happen over there. Tomorrow ain't even guaranteed to you. And you're looking down the road at, at 2024 and 28 and 2030. And you're trying to bide your time. But guess what? God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So, okay, you can do that. You can do what you planned out. But you better be asking God the whole time. You better be acknowledging him in all your ways. Because God may look at something and say, whoa, baby, you need to change tracks right now. Because this business is getting ready to bankrupt. And if they bankrupt, you suck. You ain't going to have nothing to fall back on. You better acknowledge God for timing in everything you do. He is dependable. He is trustworthy. All right, moving right along. Verse 10, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Now, my question to you is, what are you, how are you seeking God? Because I know there are many women out there. Let me talk from a woman's standpoint. They're looking for somebody to take care of them. They're not looking for someone to love, to mutually share a loving relationship. They're looking for a sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. And some of us treat God like a sugar daddy. It's like, you meet my need? Yeah, I'll do a little something, something for you. I'll walk with you. But I got, you know, I mean, you got to be taking care of me. Because if you ain't taking care of me, I ain't got time for you, Lord. That's the same way we treat. I mean, you see what I mean? How we treat a man, that's the way we treat God. Some of you men, you know, hey, baby, I took you out to dinner. You better put out. I didn't spend that money for nothing, you know. So it's not about you wanting to spend time with the woman. It's about you looking at the goal at the end of that rainbow. You looking at what's what's going to happen in that knapsack, in that bed right there. You looking at, at the fun you're going to have all night because you've earned your keep. You've earned the right to the prize. No, you haven't, baby. But that's the way you treat God. I did this. Well, God, how come you didn't do that? I did that. Well, God, how come you didn't do the other? And we don't realize how we treat them. Okay, moving right along. Those are These are things I'm just saying it as it's coming. So if it sounds disjointed, forgive me. I'm trying to follow the Lord. All right. <laughs> Verse 11. Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desires life and loveth many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So here you are an orphan. Let's, let's put it like that. I'm painting another analogy. Here you are an orphan. And this family wants to move you into their home. Now, you're used to living 
in some beat up old rundown shabby shanty shack whatever either in the country or in the, in the city but you're used to living poor and you're used to living with a bunch of junk and junky people with junky lives and junky mindsets and junky language mm. so here you are this family is going to move you into this beautiful posh house in a posh neighborhood. They're going to take you to this beautiful school where they wear uniforms. And I mean, it's a top notch school and they're going to give you the best dental care, health care. They're going to love you, nurture you, teach you, counsel you, sit and spend quality time with you. But you're not used to that. So in your mind, they're cramping your style because you want to come and go as you please because nobody cared about you before. So you don't understand that the boundaries and the limits and the disciplinary uh, choices and the standards are much higher over here. You're used to living at a gutter style level of life. So you look at this family, you don't see them as as bestowing love upon you. You see them as cramping your style. But see, we have been engrafted in. We have been adopted by the Father. And he is trying to take us to a much higher level. So we don't like it when God says, clean up your mouth, clean up your attitude, Clean up your actions. Clean up your motives. Clean this up. Tidy that. Clean your room. Sweep the floor. Take the trash out. We don't like that. We don't want anybody telling us what to do, what we can, what we cannot do. So we don't want to be bothered with that family with the fancy house because we don't like them cramping our style. We'd rather go back to the gutter way of life like the dog returning to his vomit. So we don't want to taste and see that the Lord is good because the Lord's got too many rules and regulations. But his rules and regulations are for your good, for your benefit, not for his. He doesn't need you. You need him. Think about that. But for some reason, it is so offensive to us. The thought of yielding our freedoms. We feel like we don't have any freedom when it comes to God. I want to screw who I want to screw when I want to. Mm -hmm. I want to get high when I want to. Baby, your high is so low, it's pathetic. You have not experienced a true high. Until you have experienced God. You have never experienced true, unadulterated, pure love. Until you've experienced His. You have never even had a hint of peace. Until you experience God's peace. Which means everything can be busting loose around you. Problems over here, problems over that, and over there, and God will keep you inside just as still as beautiful still waters on a lake. It looks like a sea of glass. It's so still inside. But see, you're used to living drama over here, drama over there, drama everywhere, and everything is a bunch of hiccups and strife and arguing and fussing and fighting and fuming and kicking and dragging and, and, and putting down and, and woo! And, and that's what you're used to. So when you move into this home and everything is peaceful and everything is clean and orderly and the clothes are ironed, and they don't stink like the people you live with. And then that cussing, fussing, screaming, fuming, fighting, throwing, punching, kicking, shooting. They're not doing any of that. They're not shooting up. They're not drinking up. They're not chug-a-lugging. They are living a healthy, whole, calm, loving, peaceful life where everybody's trying to do right by each other. But you're used to the backstabbers. So you're always ready to backstab because you're going to get them before they get you. That's your mindset. 
You don't want to be in this beautiful home. No, it's too fancy. They're, they're too uppity. What makes them uppity? It's not that they're uppity. It's that they live a much higher level of living than you do. That's what it is. And if you don't see it for what it really is, it's going to look like something negative to you. Because light dispels darkness and darkness hides from the light. And that's what many of us do. We hide from the people of the light. We hide from the things of God. We hide from church. We hide from, from, from the thought of giving our life to Jesus Christ. Why? I can't do what I want to do. Yeah, and? You know, when you taste and see that the Lord is good, these are some of the things you get to experience. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all thine iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. I mean the benefits go on and on. He protects you on the right. He protects you on the left. He blesses you going out. He blesses you coming in. He surrounds you with supernatural protection. He gives you favor. I was telling a friend of mine on the phone the other night. Favor is way more valuable than money. People are seeking and scratching and digging and, and scheming and, and conniving to get rich. But when you have the favor of God, things can come to you free of charge. You don't have to have the money. You just have to have the favor of God. Things can happen for you that in the norm would never be anywhere within reach. Why? The favor of God. When God favors you, he talks to you. God favored me and Milton and talked to me. Turn on your computer. I've got something for you. What did he have for me? This house I'm living in right now with an income of $981 a month. I live in a 1,400 square foot home, two story, with, my, with a terrace sitting outside of my upstairs bedroom. Living in a senior gated community. I was talking to, uh, to Brenda the other night. She told me the houses in Pasadena sell for $700,000 to over a million dollars for the average run-of-the-mill home. I looked up the old house that, that I had short-sailed. That house short-sailed at $200,000. It is now valued at $800,000. No way I could have still been there. And here, and that was run down. That man had to do a lot of fixing up that I couldn't afford to get done. But this house, if this house was in Pasadena, it would have easily sold for well over a million because of the senior gated community. Alone. Let alone the quality of the home. So what I'm trying to tell you is God knows how to situate you. He knows how to tailor make your blessing to fit you. He knows how to bring things to you that you could never have afforded otherwise. And make it easy. For you. I've never been laid on my house payment. They automatically debit my account. That and the HOA. They get paid before anything else. So if I can't pay this or I can't pay that, so far, I've always been able to pay my bills. Believe it or not. Living off $981 a month. And on top of that, God specifically instructing me to trust him for my supply for food. Mm -hmm. So I am not on food stamps. Not because I don't want to. I want to be on food stamps. But God wants me to trust him. And I think I'm doing a whole lot better trusting him. Don't you think? Yeah. So 
when you are living with God, when you fear God, and see, that's one of the standards too. Some of you don't fear anybody. You don't respect anybody. You don't, you, I mean, nothing has your reverence at all. You just have contempt for everything and everybody. You've been so disillusioned, so pounced upon that you're just full of bitterness. Your whole life is soured. Your whole outlook on life is soured. So it's hard for you to believe there is a God at all. I've been there. That's how I know. But I tried. I decided to give God a try and I tasted. And I could see that the Lord is good. Oh my goodness. And all that inner turmoil that I lived with all my life was gone. By the third day. Three days after I got saved. I woke up feeling alive for the first time in my life, feeling peace for the first time in my life, feeling excited about being alive for the first time in my life. I was 27 years old, y'all, for that to be the first time. And check it out. Here's the thing that gets me. All that old turmoil I felt 24-7. No matter what I was doing, that tremor was always going on. Some of you live with a tremor in your life. It never goes away. It's physical or it's emotional or psychological. But there's always a tremor and unrest. I was empty. I was bitter. I was disillusioned. I was what you call a dead woman walking, baby. I felt dead. I felt empty. Life wasn't even worth living. What the heck was this? Why was this joke pulled on me? I'm a joke. I'm the butt end of every joke. So what's it all about, Alfie? God stepped in and rescued me, y'all. My life is so worth living now. God is so worthy of my love, my honor, my fear, my respect. God is the... God is the strength of my life. He, he removes all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me, never to leave me. He's never, never fallen short of his word. I've got to fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. Keep my life clean every day. I want to be with him when he comes back. I've come too far, and I'll never turn back. God is the joy and the strength of my life. But how are you going to find out who God is? That's the name of that song, God Is. How are you going to find out who God is if you never taste and see that the Lord, he is good, y'all. His love is the most beautiful thing to experience. There's nothing like what you see on this planet. His peace will keep you when nobody else can. I am telling you, God is the most beautiful. I love him with all my heart, y'all. My life would never be even anywhere close to this if it wasn't for God. I wouldn't be living in this good health. I wouldn't have peace of mind. I would constantly be living in the past, being haunted by my bitter memories and the hurts and the ugly words and the mocking and the jeering and the laughing if it hadn't been for God healing my soul. God is the joy and the strength of my life. He removes all pain, misery, and strife. Oh, if you could taste and see that the Lord is good. And for those of you who already walk with him, some of you don't realize what you're missing out on. Because even though you walk with him, you got too many backup plans of your own. So you got one hand in his hand and your heart is with him. But your mind and your other hand has got a hold on some of these earthly things. 
that make you feel secure, that make you feel safe. And you don't realize that all you need is that hand that's in his hand. Put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calms the sea. Take a look at yourself and you can look at others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. You have got to learn to walk with and trust in God. One time the Lord gave me a dream. And in this dream, I was driving and all the lights went out. All, it was nighttime. The street lights went out. The car lights went out. <clears throat> And I'm wondering what's going on. So I I'm, I stopped the car because I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to run into somebody. I can't see anything. It was pitch black out there. And I said, Lord, what do I do? Where do I go? I can't see what where I'm going. I don't see what's going on. I can't tell if I'm in my lane, if somebody's on my right. This is like totally being blind. What's wrong? Please tell me what to do. And as soon as I said, please tell me what to do, the street light went to a green arrow that pointed left. And I didn't even know where I was. I just started to turn left, hoping I wouldn't run into anything. And as soon as I turned left, the street lights were all around and I could see where I was going from that point on. Do you know, no matter how dark it gets in your life, no matter how painful or confusing things may feel, you can't go by your senses. You can't go by what you understand is going on in front of you. You've got to trust God blindly. You've got to put a blind trust like Milton had to trust me to lead him without walking him off the curb and making him fall. He had to trust me to make sure I wouldn't walk him into a wall and bump his head. He had to trust me because he couldn't see a thing. When you trust God like a blind person trusts his guy, you have to understand that when you can't see what's going on in your life, when you can't understand what's in your future, when you don't know what's on your left and you don't know what's on your right and you don't understand why that happened behind you, you have to know that God will work all things together for your good no matter what. God has you in the palm of his hand. He knows the plans he has for you, plans to bless you and not harm you, plans to give you an expected hope and the future. God is. Trust him. Trust him, y'all. There's a song that says, all things work for our good, though sometimes we can't see how they could. Struggles that break our hearts in two, sometimes blind us to the truth. But our Father knows what's best for us, and His ways are not our own. So when your pathway grows dim, and you just can't see Him, remember, you're never alone. God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you can't see his plan and you can't trace his hand, trust his heart. He alone is faithful and true. He alone knows what is best for you. Okay. What I ask you to do, now that I've said all that I've said, Ask the Lord to step in to your situation. Ask the Lord that his will be done in your life on earth as it is in heaven. Ask the Lord to make the changes in your life that you're too afraid to make. That you will not lose a dime. You will not lose an hour. You will not lose a thing. But you will be blessed. Put your, not just put your hand in the hand of the man who steals the water, put your life in his hands. 
Put your well-being in his hands. Put your health in his hands. Put your financial situation in his hands. Put your day in his hands. Put your personal interaction with people in his hands. Put you in his hands. Put your future in his hands. He's got you. He's safer than a safe net. He's more dependable than a gun. He's there for you, baby. If God be for you, who can be against you? Ask God to have your back. That's your rear guard. The Bible calls it your rear reward. He's got your back. Ask God to go ahead of you and make the crooked places straight and the rough places plain, or as the Bible calls it, we say smooth. Ask God to take control of your life from you taking control of it. Say, Lord, if you got to move me out of the way for a minute to get things straightened up, help me to know it's your hand doing it. And I'll sit back and let you do the driving. And I'll try hard not to be a backseat driver. What are you doing, Lord? Wait a minute. I normally go this way. Shut your mouth. Be still and know that he is God. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good, y'all. Your life will be, you and your life will be the better for it. You and your life will reach the highest levels once you let God take the driver's seat. Amen. And let him work out his plan for you and not you steadily trying to work out your own. God bless those of you who already are in Christ to get deeper in them. And God bless those of you who don't know him yet and you're afraid to taste him because you don't like trying stuff new and you don't want nothing uh, taking control of your life. I pray that God gives you a heart to open up to him and receive the best thing you could ever have in your life, y'all. In the name of Jesus, one thing I will guarantee you, he will give you satisfaction that you have never experienced that you can never experience. No matter how much money's in your pocket, no matter how many friends you have, no matter how good your health is or how good your life is, you will never find that inner satisfaction that only God can give because that's that itch that you can't scratch away. Only God can get that one. Give him all of you and see what happens to your life. God bless you.